Oh, it's you again. Welcome back. Oh, oh what's, what's going on? Well, oh, that feels really weird. Oh, 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 oh. Hi, I'm Mark. I've been a professional artist for the, you know, years, and um, now I teach art for a living. In this unusually sponsored episode of YouTube Art School, I'll show you how to color your drawings in Clip Studio Paint. All the exact same steps that I used to color this. But what about me? Ah, Photoshop, be gone. If you're new to coloring or if you're just looking for a better, more straightforward workflow because your sucks and you're drowning in layers all the time, well, this is it. So strap yourself to your chair and oh, quickly, let's get this class started. Classes in session. Pay attention. Coloring is hard. Or is it? It's a lot easier when you have a good process for it. That makes all the difference between you spending 2000 hours on a piece and making seemingly no progress at all versus just a few hours and you're done. In today's class, I'll show you my updated, my freshest six step process to color any drawing in, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but my new love, Clip Studio Paint. We'll stick to super simple tools though, so I'll show you every layers and every step in detail. So you should be able to try this along with me, regardless of your experience. I got you. And this professional class is only gonna cost you the low cost of either one like or one sub. It's good value, you'll see. After you've paid the class fee. That's better. All right, let's do it. Let's turn you into a coloring machine. Ah, we'll need a line art to start, of course. We need something to color. Oh, oh God. Oh, well, there it is. By the way, the cleaner your drawing is, the better. Let's say just aim for clean-ish. Don't go too crazy on this step. Depending on your preferences, the line art might actually not make it until the end anyway. The shading will swallow it all. <laughs> but I'm getting ahead of myself. One thing at a time. Make sure the line art is on its own layer and set it to the multiply blend mode. So far, pretty easy. Step one, clear. Now let's set the stage for the colors. For this, I'll go ahead and create a selection for my entire drawing using the good old lasso tool. If your line art is clean enough, you can also select the white portion of the background and invert your selection to quickly be left with the silhouette selected. But mine is full of holes, so rather than cleaning up my lines, I prefer to just lasso it all. Once that's done, fill that selection with a random color for now on a new layer, right underneath the line art layer. This is our flats layer. I said, I said flats. It's going to remain at the bottom of the layer stack for the whole time. Now, the individual parts of the drawings also need to be broken into their own individual colors. So we're going to be using the lasso tool again to separate everything. I usually keep all the flat colors on the same layer. Once all your different elements have their own colors, make some final adjustments to cement your choice of color palette and we're ready to move on to the shading. I have a popular class on how to choose colors at this step, so check that out if you're not sure how to go about it. I'll put links to all the classes I refer to in the video description. And actually, we can still adjust those colors later, so no worries, but I'm happy with this. Light gold and pink, that will do. Step two, clear. Shading time. Every step, on its own layer. So let's duplicate the flats layer to get a base for the shading layer. I want this layer to be all white though. So let's go ahead and adjust the luminosity by bringing up the hue panel or by going into the edit menu, tonal adjustments and selecting it there. Then let's set that layer's blend mode to multiply, which will make the white disappear. Multiplying white has no effect, so it looks transparent. If I paint using black, on the other hand, well, we'll be able to see something. I don't want to be able to paint outside of my silhouette though, so let's select lock transparent pixels here. Click. Now I can only paint within my white silhouette that I started with. Much more convenient. And uh, well, it's time to go to town on the shading. But first, I like to hide the flats layer for this step and lower the opacity of the line art layer so that we can focus only on shading and not be distracting by a bunch of other stuff. Starting on the big shapes first, ignoring the details, I'll use a big soft brush paired with the lasso tool to get something going. I'm also using a custom brush that I made that's part of my advanced painter set 
if you're interested. Works great in Clip Studio Paint. Link below. The trick with shading is to think of all the parts as simple volumes. The torso, for example, is like a big cylinder, so I shade it like a cylinder and repeat this process for all the big pieces, then the medium ones, and then the details. Once again, I have a detailed class on the topic, so go check it out if you need it. Link in the description again. Now it's also good to start thinking about your lights at this step, but we're not going to shade any particular lighting. That's important. The shading and the lighting are two very distinct steps in this method. And uh, the finished shading should look like a sort of ambient shading as if the character was outside on a very cloudy day with no sun. And notice that I'm not darkening any part of the outfit. It's important everything is shaded the same, using a consistent range of values. If you want something to be darker, edit it on the flat layer later. For now, imagine the shading is all the same white matte material. Now then, I don't need the line art anymore, do I? My shading layer is plenty enough. Be gone! And with that, step three, clear! It's cleared the way for my special announcement about my complete art education program. All the skills that allow me to create characters, design them, shade them, color them, etc. Everything you would need to be able to draw anything your mind can imagine, I teach in great depth in the program. Check the coupon in the description of the video for a massive discount valid until the end of the month only to celebrate reaching 12,000 students, which is uh, absolutely insane. There you'll also find a link to the program to learn more. Check it out. If you're already a student, thank you. I love you. Now back to my painting. All right, so let's bring back the flats layer to see what we have. Oh, oh, oh hello. That looks pretty good already. But the black of the shading doesn't really cut it for some of these materials. Like the skin, for example. Ugh, gross. No thanks. Looks too muddy. To make this better, let's first lighten the shading layer using the hue panel again so that the shading isn't so overpowering. That's, that's better. Now let's go ahead and introduce some subtle color in that shading. Super simple too. I already have everything broken up into different colors, so I can just go back to my flats layer for a second. Magic wand, you know, or select the skin and back again to my shading layer. This time I just need to color balance my selection using the tool found in the same menu here to hmm, something like this maybe. <sighs> that looks a heck of a lot better already. Let's do the same for all the other parts too, because uh, we don't want muddy colors. It's illegal. And by the way, it usually works pretty well to select the same color as the one you're using for the flats. Just a darker shade, obviously. And once you're done, well, the entire shading layer should be colorized. No more black. Just like this. Step four, clear. Looks pretty good as is. Maybe even enough for some of you, but lighting adds way too much wow factor. So, so let's light this up in the fifth step and we're almost done. New layer, top of the stack, call it lighting one and set it to overlay blend mode. You might want to add more than one light and we will, hence the name of the layer. Every light should be on their own individual layer so that you can adjust their opacity if needed. Big brain stuff. I have a class on lighting too, so make sure you check it out before trying this. Link down below. Now I'll go ahead and consider my first light source is the sun, a warm yellow light coming from above somewhere. Eventually you might be able to paint this from imagination, but if not yet, don't hesitate to use resources like the assets that Clip Studio Paint has directly within the software to get a good reference for the lighting. You can quickly spawn a 3D character in here by going into the materials menu, select a 3D bod, and then just pose it like I have already done. Look at her. Perfect. From here, you can adjust the lighting to find something that you like and, uh, well, try to mimic the same effect on your own character. Super convenient. Personally, though, because I like a challenge, as I paint this, I'm always trying to imagine that I am the light source. Looking down at the scene as the bald light that I am, what I see is lit, so I paint light on it. And what I can't see is in the shadows. It's a hard mental exercise, though, so use references to double check your results if you try to do it from imagination, too. Man, this is by far my favorite step. It's relatively quick and it really adds a dramatic effect to the painting. Lights on, lights off, on. Hmm. Since everything is on its own layer, we can always adjust the opacity if something is too bright. Something a bit dimmer might work better in my case here. Hmm, yep. Not bad, but let's add another light. Maybe a cooler light this time. Coming from the side for a dramatic effect. Oh, oh yes, ship it. Lighting done. 
Step five, clear. Looks pretty good, I think, but it's missing material definition and she's missing some makeup, definitely. Guess what we're doing in step six. The final step is going to be super quick. It's going to be another layer, completing our layer stack on top of it all. And I'll set this to hard light blend mode this time. Hard light is great because it can add brightness to the colors underneath when you choose a lighter color, but it can also behave like the multiply blend mode when you paint using a darker color, all on the same layer. We're not looking to make big edits with this final step though. It's going to be pretty subtle, focused mostly on details. Stuff like the colors of the lips, you know, the nose, the ears, reflections on certain materials to make them slightly different from one another. I have some metal trims in here, so I'll want to add a lot of reflections on those, but I don't want any on the fabric of her cloak since it's a non-reflective surface. Just obvious stuff. Anyways, once this step is done, it might look something like mm, this on, off, on. As you can see, it's pretty subtle, especially seen from a distance, but now we have this nice variety in the materials and everything looks just way more alive. Let's add the lights layer back in too, shall we? Light one click light two click Ooh. well 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 are we done or what in a lot of cases that's going to be my final result but i went a little overboard with this one and added yet another layer on top of my stack let's call it bonus step number seven i just left that layer set to the normal blend mode this time nothing fancy and here's the final result oh i also added the background but uh, that's irrelevant oh yeah mm -mm. ship it and uh, well, that's gonna wrap it up for this week's class. What do you think? With this process, as long as each of your different steps are clean, the results should be good. It's really tempting to rush through the steps to get to the end though, but be patient. You will be well rewarded. I hope that was helpful. If it was, well, let me know in the comments. Do it now. Also, check the link in the description for a free three-month trial of Clip Studio Paint. You can use it literally with any device you have. PC, Mac, smartphones, tablets, Android or Apple, which is awesome. Give it a shot. That's actually what most of my students use. And uh, uh, make sure that you click on the bell to get notified when next week's class drops. You must not be late. Oh, oh, oh.